कुछ तो दिन के लिए जाएगी बस वहां पे वही भाड़ा लगाने का जुगाड़ करना है हेलो गाइस गुड इवनिंग कैन यू मी Yeah, hello guys. Okay, Shreyas. Yeah, I got your message. The videos you are not getting. Okay, fine. The problem is actually I'm not in Bangalore right now, so I have limited access uh, to the internet. So that's why I'm not able to download it and upload it. So I'll ask someone, probably Akhil sir, to do it on my behalf. Okay. So you will get it soon. Okay, regarding the uh, all the videos which is not been sent till then. Okay, Shreyas and all of you. Yeah. okay so that's why i have my own constant nowadays a uh, little bit difficult time i'm facing uh, there is some medical emergency that's why i'm in uh, you know delhi from the past 20 25 days okay so that's why all these you know uh, uh, difficulty i am facing but yes uh, you will get the video soon okay so could you tell me what have we done a uh, last class where were we acha we have to start with valence bond okay so valence bond theory means that overlapping concept right just a second i'll put this in the chart and then this one second yes yes
So last class we discussed with uh, VSEPR and we have seen, yeah, and we have seen that how the, you know, um, bond pair and loan pair in a given compound defines the geometry or shape of a molecule and what are the factors which affects the bond angle, right? So we have seen uh, three, four factors already, right? The next theory is, the valence bond theory because uh, we are talking about the bonding theory. So valence bond theory mainly deals with the geometry and shape of the molecule. Here we are going to see how atoms forms a bond, right? This is the bonding theory and the heading all of you write down. It is valence bond theory. Okay, what is valence bond theory? According to this theory, the molecules are formed by overlapping of atomic orbit. Right? So this theory is based upon overlapping of atomic orbitals. Right? So atomic orbitals which contains unpaired electron, single electron, that overlaps and forms a bond. So atomic orbitals which contains unpaired electron. Orbitals which contains unpaired electron overlaps and forms a bond, right? Because the pairing is done when overlapping takes place, right? Okay, so when you talk about the overlapping of orbitals, atomic orbitals, so atomic orbitals, there are two types of overlap, okay? So next to write down, overlapping is done, can be done. Overlapping can be done in two ways. The first one is axial overlapping. And the second one is lateral overlapping. Axial and lateral overlapping. Axial overlapping we also call it as a head on overlapping head on overlapping and lateral it also known as sideways okay so first thing you write down here we'll see what is axial overlapping
write down it takes place along it takes place along along the internuclear end along the internuclear axis okay axial overlapping always forms always forms sigma bond right the first overlapping between the two bond is always axial and it always forms sigma bond so if you look at this uh, geometry uh, this orbital overlap here we have an s orbital and we have an p orbital so it is sp overlap right p orbital and p orbital s and s orbital this overlap okay so this is along the internu what is internuclear axis if you join the two nucleus with a, which is which is with a straight line this line is the internuclear axis passes through the two nucleus of the two orbital here you see this line is the internuclear axis this is also the internuclear axis so the orbital or the overlaps that takes place along the internuclear axis that is axial overlap internuclear axis. this one is also internuclear axis this one is also internuclear axis and all these are axial overlap this one is also axial and this one is also axial okay done okay now in this one the extent of overlapping you see if you see it is a experimental order we have the extent of overlapping it is maximum for p p then we have sp and then we have s s overlap one second so this is the extent of overlapping we have pp overlap no it's not um pranab uh f f overlap first of all we don't consider it right so overlapping depends upon the shape of the molecule right. i'll tell i'll tell you what it is shape of the shape of the molecule not shape of the orbital right so it has been observed that when we have the lobe of a uh, dumbbell shape that overlaps to a greater extent 
because of its shape. Okay, more area it covers when overlapping takes place, and more area means more extent, and hence the stronger the bond. Yes, got it. So extent of overlapping basically means that when the orbital overlaps, the shaded area that I have drawn in the last slide, that area is more. That is the extent of overlapping. Okay. What do you have to keep in mind that um, the first overlap that takes place between the two atom in a molecule is always axial overlap. When axial overlap is done, then only we can have lateral overlapping. Without axial, lateral is not possible. It's not like the two molecules directly forms a lateral bond. That is not possible. Two atoms in a molecule. Okay. First, always axial. Like you see, oxygen, oxygen double bond. If you draw, right. So how many sigma and how many pi we have here? One sigma and one pi. Right. So sigma bond that forms here, that is because of axial overlapping. So this is sigma and this is pi. So this is axial overlapping and this is lateral overlapping, which forms a pi bond. Okay. So pi bond always forms once the sigma bond is formed already. That's why first overlap is always sigma. Is always axial that gives sigma bond, and then we can have lateral overlapping. Okay. So that's the one thing. Now. See, first of all, Vada, uh, we are not. We are just looking at this theory, valence bond theory. There are drawbacks in this theory also. It did not explain the overlapping of d orbital. That is one of the drawbacks, and that's why we got the another theory here, right? Because of the drawback in this theory, we got the another theory, which we'll discuss after this. Yes, in valence bond theory, uh, we did not talk about the d-d overlap. Right, we don't consider it here. Right, so obviously there are some drawbacks in this theory, like we had drawbacks in uh, various atomic models. Okay, similar kind of thing you can understand here. So PP, SP, and SS overlap we have. Now the second type of overlap that I've already told you, it is lateral or sideways overlapping. Right down, it takes place. It takes place once the axial overlapping is done. It takes place once the axial overlapping is done. Once the axial overlapping is done, and the orbital and the orbital approaches each other, and the orbital approaches each other along the axis. Along the axis, which is perpendicular to, along the axis which is perpendicular to, along the axis which is perpendicular to, internuclear axis. Along the axis which is perpendicular to the internuclear axis. <clears throat> okay, it always forms pi bond. Next time, it 
always forms by bond. Okay. Like you see, suppose we have a an axial overlapping, PP overlap. I'm considering. This is suppose the axial overlapping we have. Okay. So this atom has three p orbital, right? Suppose this is p z, <clears throat> right? This is the internuclear axis we have. And once the overlapping takes place, then the internuclear axis is fixed. This is axial, right? But this atom has two more orbital, p orbital present. I am drawing here only one, just to make you understand. This is the another p orbital we have, right? So since the overlapping takes place along this line, that is along the internuclear axis. So now the internuclear axis is fixed. When these two orbital overlaps here, this overlap is a lateral overlap, perpendicular to the internuclear axis. So this is lateral overlapping, and lateral overlapping, you see, it forms by bond. Did you get it? No, see, <clears throat> lateral overlapping D orbital can form. We have d pi d pi bonding. We'll see that later. We'll have d pi d pi bonding, but usually we don't consider the extent of overlapping in d orbital. No, it's not possible for s orbital. Lateral overlapping is not possible for s orbital because we s or s capsule has only one orbital. Right, so we always have a line which is which which is, which is passing through the two nucleus. So S S always gives you a uh, axial overlapping. Okay, if you try to understand this, this uh, pi electron. Suppose this is a sigma bond we have. Right, this is a sigma bond between the two atom, and this is a nucleus. The overlap that you have, the lobe overlap, it forms an electron cloud like this. This is the overlap, lateral overlap. Right? Electron cloud above this sigma bond and below this sigma bond. Electron cloud, right? So this is the electron cloud we have. Electron cloud, right? This collectively gives one pi bond. It's not like we have three, two pi bonds here. This two gives one pi bond. Are you getting me properly? Am I audible, guys? Is there any lag or something? Yeah, I think Madhav, it's your problem then. Yeah, okay. Maybe it will get, you know, fixed in some time. <clears throat> yeah, fine. Let me you know if it is, you know, if it, it, it won't, you know, uh, go well in the class. Then I have to change the network actually. We'll see that once. If you have difficulty in understanding, just let me know, any one of you, okay? Fine. So this is the electron cloud, this cloud that you have, right? So this gives you one pi bond, collectively gives one pi bond. So pi bond is something like this. If you can, uh, you know, see me. See, if you have a sigma bond like this, you see, this is a sigma bond, if you can see, right, this is a sigma bond. So this is the axial overlap, you see this. The lobes that overlaps like this, okay? It is axial overlapping. But the orbital which is perpendicular to this axis is this. When this two overlap like this, above and below also, when this two overlap, this forms a pi bond. Can you imagine this? Right. So we have a sigma bond like this, axial overlapping, and electron cloud here like this, because of lateral overlapping, and electron cloud here also below. This I have shown over. Is it clear? Yeah. 
electron cloud is there because of overlapping okay so this forms the pi bond always now what is the characteristics of sigma and pi bond yes it is mostly but since uh, pranav that's right but since we do not we could not we can we cannot find out the position of an electron that's why we draw the complete overlap and we say the electron cloud is above and below also of the sigma bond see vaibhav electron cloud is the electron that is present in this region right like this overlapping the electron is present between the two nucleus in the bonding state because of overlap right so overlapping is a is a property of an orbital which contains unpaired electron but the electron cloud is the density of electron over here in this region right understood yes or no tell me yes electron will be one side only at a time but which side we do not know that's why they present it like this exact position we cannot find out no right the orbitals which has unpaired electron will take part in overlapping and hence the electron gets spared tell me any doubt <clears throat> yes pranav yes it is covalent yeah sharing of electron it is covalent compound okay next write down characteristics of sigma and pi bond copy down this this table you copy this down all of you
let me know once you are done Then all of you. Yes, pi bonds forms because of the lateral overlapping of p orbital, but not only p. We can have d orbitals also, but in valence bond theory, we don't talk about d orbitals. Point number four, Acha. The molecular orbital is symmetrical about internuclear. Okay, so it is fine uh, since we did not talk about molecular orbital. So this better you write atomic orbital here instead of molecular. But the statement is not wrong as far as molecular orbital is also concerned. But for this, for now, whatever whatever we have done so far, molecular orbital we did not talk about. Right, so better if you write the atomic orbital. Right, but the statement is not wrong for molecular orbital. Yes, Aditya. Yeah, definitely I will do molecular orbital theory, but we'll do one by one. By one, okay.
will do it today itself do you have semester exam coming okay when it is coming week when is chemistry coming tuesday what is the portion what is the portion for chemistry guys okay so all the three chapters uh, we have done fine so bonding will do it today okay whatever it's required for school exam will do it today are you prepared well because tuesday is like you have just two three days right okay fine did you finish all of you acha for hsri properties of matter acha states of states of matter they have done okay fine not an issue yeah fine guys so you see how this uh, you know orbital overlaps uh, you know takes place and forms the molecule so we are going to see a few examples here oh okay fine okay mother i'll go back just a second okay for hsr the date is not declared right you said after 1st october is it prana okay okay from the 6 or by then we can do that particular chapter also okay not completely but yes we can do that mostly okay not a problem okay now you see some examples on this the first one is h2 molecule you see how hydrogen molecule forms hydrogen molecule forms by the orbital overlap of the two hydrogen atom which has one one electron each and this is the bond formation we have by the orbital if you draw the orbital diagram here we have two hydrogen uh, atom suppose one is this and other one is this sorry other one is this okay this is the internuclear axis internuclear axis both orbital contains one one electron right one one electron and along the internuclear axis overlapping takes place and it forms a sigma bond x so this is the axial overlapping we have we can easily understand this this line is the internuclear axis now the second molecule you see oxygen o2 okay if you look at the structure of o2 we all know oxygen has a double bond and each oxygen atom has two lone pair on it 
you try to understand the orbital diagram of O2 molecule, you see the electronic configuration of oxygen atom is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p4. This 2s has two electron, and 2p has four electron like this. Valence shell is this, right? S has two and 2p has four. So if you draw the orbital diagram of it, I'm going to draw this thing. So 3p orbital, px, py, pz, contains this electron, right? This 3p orbital, if I draw here, I'm not doing anything. I'm just drawing this box in the in the in the shape of the orbital. That is it. Similarly, the other oxygen. And now you see, this is the one of the oxygen atom. It contains one electron here, right? One electron here, and suppose two electron. Okay. And like this, we have another oxygen atom also, which has a similar configuration like this. Okay, so this has one electron, this has again one electron, and this has two electrons. Now this overlap you see along this line, this is the internuclear axis. And along this line, the overlap that we have, this is axial overlap, which forms a sigma bond. This two orbital goes under lateral overlapping right so this is lateral overlapping so it forms pi bond right like i said oxygen atom has two lone pair so one lone pair is this and another lone pair i did not shown shown it i did not show it here but this is the another lone pair we have in S subshell. So if you want to show this S subshell electron, S electron here, this is the S orbital, two electron present, spherical shape. The another S orbital, you can draw it here for the another atom, and two electron we have. So this is the diagram we have, orbital diagram. Did you understand this? Clear? Yeah, no doubt? Yes. So could you draw the orbital diagram for nitrogen molecule? N2?
dan Yeah, hybridization mother just you let it be. We'll we'll discuss it now only. We'll discuss. Last point you let it be. We'll discuss. No. First of all, electron won't overlap. Orbital overlap, which contains electron. So when the orbital overlaps, Aditya, so the spin of the electron will change. One is clockwise, other one is anti-clockwise, and that happens on its own in order to minimize the repulsion between the electron. Understood? Hybridization, Sashwat, I won't answer now. Just give me 10 15 minutes. I will explain what is hybridization and then we'll discuss these two. Okay, give me 10 15 minutes. Did you draw the orbital diagram of N2? Correct. So it is very much similar to oxygen molecule. We know nitrogen molecule has nitrogen, nitrogen triple bond and a lone pair on each nitrogen atom. So if you look at the electronic configuration of nitrogen, it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Three orbitals I am drawing here. Okay, each of these orbitals has one one electron. Along this line, we have internuclear axis forms sigma bond. When these two overlaps, all the parallel orbital overlaps. The parallel one, it forms one pi bond. And when these two overlap, it forms another pair. And the lone pair is the S electron that we have here in S. Right? Okay. One more we'll do here. Sorry. The next one we have CH4 molecule, methane. If you look at the configuration of carbon atom, carbon has six electron, 
one s two two s two two p two. Right. So two s has two electron, and two p has also two electron. Right. This is the ground state configuration. Now you see. Carbon is attached with four hydrogen atom with a single bond in CH4, right? So for this uh, bond formation, carbon hydrogen four bonds. Carbon must have four unpaired electrons, like one, two, three, four. Carbon must have four unpaired electron, right? So two electrons we have here unpaired. So what happens to make a bond with the four hydrogen atom? This electron jumps into the vacant orbital, and this we call it as the excited state of carbon, which is required for the bonding with hydrogen. One, two, and three. This is the excited state we have. Right, and all these electrons, sorry, molecules, sorry, orbital, which has one one electron. Hydrogen overlaps with these four orbitals and forms the bond. Okay, so if I draw this structure, we have three p orbital, three p orbital, and we have one s orbital. Suppose the s orbital is this. Okay. All these orbitals has how many electrons? One one electron. Are you getting it, all of you? Please respond. One one electron. This diagram, did you understand? Any difficulty in this? It is just the box I have written in the form of uh, the shape of the orbital. Yes, that's right, mother. Okay. So what happens after this? The four hydrogen atom. Which has s orbital, it overlaps with this and forms the bond. All these are s orbital of hydrogen, right? So it is hydrogen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. All these are axial or lateral. Do we have any lateral overlapping here? Do we have any lateral overlapping? No, we do not have because we can always draw a internuclear axis like this. Right, so it is. All these are axial overlapping. Okay, so what all orbitals are involved in the bonding? We have one s p x orbital. Other one is s p y s for which atom? S for which atom here? All these three s for hydrogen, and then s s orbital for hydrogen and carbon. Right. So you see what happens here in the four bond, we have different different orbitals involved, right? We have different different orbitals involved, and when different different orbitals are involved, so what we can conclude that the bond forms in CH four molecule according to the valence bond theory means all the four bonds. All four bonds should be different. Should be different, and different in what aspect? Different in terms of their strength, in in terms of their length, because different different orbitals are there. They cannot be identical, basically. Little bit of difference should be there, right? All four bonds should be different from each other. From each other. Suppose if not these three bonds, S S P X S P Y and S P Z, at least these three bond and this S S bond must be different from each other, right? Because of the extent of overlapping, right? So this was the conclusion according to valence bond theory. But actually, what we observe, but experimentally, but it has been observed. Experimentally, that all the four bonds are 
are four bonds are exactly identical all the four bonds are exactly identical hence hence vbt fails to explain the bonding in ch4 is it clear any doubt in this to explain the bonding of ch4 and a new type of theory that we get this theory we call it as hybridization vbt fails here and then we got a new theory to explain the bonding here and that theory is hybridization yeah that's right you want to correct did you understand why do we need this concept of hybridization okay now we'll see because the extent of overlapping concept is true for the other molecules like h2 n2 o2 for all these molecules the theory was perfect but it does not fit for ch4 like i said in the beginning atomic models we have we have various theories right but all theories this model does not explain all the you know property of electrons within an atom to some extent one particular theory is correct right to some extent the other particular theory other uh, other atomic models are correct so for bonding also we have different different theories which explains different different kinds of molecules right so now we'll see what is hybridization how do we find out hybridization and how hybridization explains the bonding of ch4 molecule okay so write down the heading all of you hybridization we know we have already discussed little bit in the beginning in of gofc right right down it is a mixing of in short i'll write down it is the mixing of atomic orbitals of the central atom of the central atom with slightly different in energy it is the redistribution of energy it is the redistribution of energy and forms and forms a set of new orbitals new orbitals of equal energy 
means through hybridization we get a set of new orbitals of equal energy which is called this this new orbital that we have this we call it as hybrid orbitals so atomic orbitals and now this is hybrid orbitals so how hybrid orbital forms by the combination of atomic orbitals so what happens for the central atom the atomic orbitals of central atom in some molecule combines and forms a new set of orbitals which we call it as hybrid orbitals are you getting my point write down all hybrid orbitals all hybrid orbitals have same shape and equal energy have same shape and equal energy so what is the you know use of hybridization here what happens in hybridization we have atomic orbitals of certain different different energy right like but the difference in energy is not that great okay slightly different in energy before the bonding with other atom like in ch4 before the bonding with hydrogen atom the atomic orbitals of carbons combines and forms a new set of orbitals which we call it as hybrid orbitals or hybridized orbital no 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 it is not about electron cloud stress hybridization is for orbital not for electron electron you let it be now okay obviously electron is present in the atom but electron cloud is just is just the density of an electron at a given uh, you know in a given area that is the electron cloud we are not talking about the position of electron where the electron is present right in which orbital and all that we are not talking about we are talking about like we have orbitals like this we have orbitals and this may contain some electron that's not a problem this may contain some electron so before bonding it with the another atom these orbitals combines together i'm talking about this and this combines and forms a new set of orbitals this new set of orbitals we call it a hybrid orbital if this has two electron here also we have two electrons one electron one electron one electron so position of electron is fine they exactly same but i am talking about the combination of atomic orbital which gives the uh, hybrid orbitals here yes Yes, understood. Okay, write down the heading. Characteristics of characteristics of hybrid orbital. first point write down all hybrid orbitals all hybrid orbitals have same energy already i've given you this have same or equal energy
या इट इज हाइपोथेटिकल ओनली hybridization concept is you know it is not hypothetical okay because we have seen the different shape of orbitals in the molecule right that is possible i will just i'll explain that just a second i'll take one example and make you understand this but let me give you the characteristics of hybrid orbital so all hybrid orbitals have same energy like atomic orbitals hybrid orbital can also accommodate maximum of two electrons more than two is not possible just a second aditya i'll explain wait third point hybrid orbital always forms sigma bond hybrid orbital always forms sigma bond and may contain lone pair right on continue with this point hybrid orbitals always forms sigma bond and may contain lone pair right so if you remember in goc i have told you that while counting the hybridization we don't count pi bond remember that we just check lone pair and sigma bond is it right that is the reason because it never forms pi pi bond hybrid orbital okay it never forms pi bond it can have lone pair it can form sigma bond but pi bond it never forms so hybrid orbital always forms sigma bond and may contain lone pair next point if there are pi bonds to be formed if there are pi bonds to be formed then equal number of orbitals then equal number of orbitals must be left unhybridized means the number of pi bonds equals to the number of atomic orbitals okay which is left unhybridized so again the next point is if there are pi bonds to be formed equal number of orbitals atomic orbital you write down equal number of atomic orbital must be left unhybridized again i am repeating if there are pi bonds to be formed equal number of orbitals must be left atomic orbitals must be left unhybridized next point the geometry of molecule the geometry of molecule can be determined by knowing hybridization the okay, geometry of the molecule can be determined by knowing hybridization so draw this column here this side we have hybridization
and this side we have geometry. So if hybridization is sp, then the geometry is linear. If hybridization is sp2, then geometry is trigonal planar. If hybridization is sp3, geometry is tetrahedral. If hybridization is sp3, d, it is TVP, trigonal bipyramidal. If it is sp3, d2, it is octahedral. or we also call it as square by pyramidal. If it is DSP2, which you won't get here mostly, it is square planar. Yeah, I'll go back, wait. Copy this down, I'll go back. So this is the geometry you must keep in mind according to the hybridization of the molecule. One last point you write down. The number of hybrid orbital forms The number of hybrid orbital forms equals to equals to the number of atomic orbitals combined. Okay, I'll go back. The number of hybrid orbital forms equals to the atomic orbital combined. Okay. Last point is number of hybrid orbital forms equals to the number of atomic orbital combines. Okay. This table you draw. One side we have the orbital mixed. Hybrid orbital. hybrid orbital forms okay so if you are mixing one s and one p s and p you are mixing so you will get sp hybridized hybrid orbital okay since you are mixing s and p if you are mixing one s and two p orbital then you will get sp2 hybridized hybrid orbital but how many sp you are getting here since 1s and 1p two atomic orbital combines so you will get two sp hybridized hybrid orbital are you getting my point yes 
how many sp2 hybridized orbital we get here in the second one 2p and 1s so we'll get 3 sp2 hybridized hybrid orbital now in this 2p we do not know which p is getting over is is getting into hybridization px py or py pz or px pz that we do not know okay but we'll have this sp2 when we have s plus 3p what we get quickly 4 sp3 right if you have 1d 1s and 2p then what we get 2 3 4 4 dsp2 dsp2 mostly you won't get here in this chapter but you will get this in class 12 coordination compound right let's see that it is 4 not 5 dsp2 it is 4 not 5 if you have 1s 3p and 1d that is 5 sp3 d orbital we get 1s 3p and 2d 5 sp3 d2 1s 3p and 3d or oh, it is 6 not 5 1s 3p and 3d so you will get 7 sp3 d2 then all of you last one is d3 what i have written acha d3 yeah copy okay so overall what happens here in in atoms the atomic orbitals combines with each other and forms hybrid orbitals okay these hybrid orbitals will have same energy and the number of hybrid orbital forms must be equals to the number of atomic orbital compounds they all have same shape if we talk about the shape here generally the hybrid orbitals looks like this i'll tell you here suppose one s and one p are combining to form a hybrid orbital the hybrid orbital that we get is this one two hybrid orbital which is this this is the orbital we have sp hybridized orbital and sp hybridized orbital one s and one p so generally the shape of hybrid orbital is like this one right so we are not concerned with the shape of the hybrid orbital that is not there in our syllabus but mostly whenever we draw we draw shape of hybrid orbital like this one is bigger lobe other one is smaller one right hybrid orbital okay now based on this concept you see how they explains the bonding in ch4 molecule okay now you see ch4 like you know carbon has six electron 1s2 2s2 2p2 2s has two electron and 2p has two electron it is a ground state so in excited state what happens this electron jumps over here and it converts into 
right? It is the excited state. Now, before it makes a bond with hydrogen atom, what happens for carbon? This S and 3P orbitals goes under hybridization, right? So this four orbitals goes under hybridization and it forms four sp3 hybridized hybrid orbital. Here we have one one electron. In this hybrid orbital also, we have one one electron like this. You see now the four orbitals have equal energy with one unpaired electron. And in this hybrid orbital, hydrogen donates its electron, sorry, the hydrogen S orbitals overlaps with these hybrid orbital and forms CH4 molecule. So if you draw the orbital representation of it, the four hybrid orbital is this. Right, and each of these hybrid orbital contains one one electron. This is for carbon, right? This is hydrogen, S shape. It overlaps with this orbital with one one electron. And all these overlap, you see it is axial overlapping. Right, all these are hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. The orbitals that overlaps here is all the orbitals you see, it is sp3 s overlap. Here also it is sp3 s overlap. Here also it is sp3 s overlap. And this one is also sp3 s overlap. Correct? All bond you see contain similar orbitals. That's why the four bonds in CH4 molecules are identical and they have the same bond strength and bond length. Did you understand it? So Sashwath, what was your doubt regarding hybridization and VBT? No, it is not there, stress, but yes, uh, like experimentally, once we uh, came to know that all the four bonds in carbon in CH4 molecules are identical, then this is the probability, the most probable or most you know, satisfactory explanation of the bonding of CH4 molecule. Like you see, valence bond theory, I told you, it, fa it fails to explain the, the geometry, sorry, the bonding in CH4 molecule, then we have hybridization, right? So both are the theories, both are the theories of bonding, right? We do not have any similarity between the two, right? They, they explain the bonding in of a molecule in completely different manner. Valence bond theory don't discuss about the mixing of orbitals, but hybridization is the mixing of orbitals. Yeah, we'll do a lot. We'll do a lot more example on this because this is very important. Don't worry with that. But first you tell me, did you understand this? No, it's not. Where is the repulsion? I'm not talking about electronic repulsion here. Where is it? Shreya, Shreya, sorry. I'm not talking about the electronic repulsion. I'm talking about the mixing of orbitals here. Yes, yes, I'm talking about this only. I'm not talking about electronic repulsion. It is just the mixing of orbitals so that all the orbitals will have same energy and they combines with hydrogen atom in a similar manner.
No, it's not the only thing. See, the main you know, thing here is, now you see in this CH4 molecule, the orbital that is involved, it has the similar orbital. You know? All the four bonds forms by the overlap of sp3s orbital. So similar orbital, we can have similar strength and similar bond length. And hence the bond, all the four bonds are identical. See, see, one thing, one thing here. It's not like they take energy from outside or something like that. When electrons, see, when electrons occupy the orbital, it affects the energy of the orbital. The orbital's energy increases a bit. Suppose we have three orbitals, Px, Py, and Pz. One of the orbital has electron and other two won't have any electron. Then suppose Px has electron. So the orbital energy of Px is slightly more than the energy of Py and Pz, right? So in order to have the similar energy, these orbitals, uh, you know, intermix and forms a new set of orbitals. So energy is there because of the exchange of electron or because of the presence of electron. No, it has nothing to do with electron pair repulsion stress. Hybridization is just the mixing of orbitals. Yes, so it is the most acceptable, you can say, or most satisfactory explanation of the bonding in CH4 molecule and many other molecules. Yes, new set of orbitals are purely hypothetical. No, no, no. Hybrid orbitals always have the same energy. Yeah, before they hybridize, fine. Before they hybridize, they have the they have some difference in energy. So there only they mix and forms the identical energy orbit. But the difference is not that great. Yeah. Yes. Understood. Shifting of electrons, uh, you know, if uh, I, I cannot, I, I won't say it is not possible. It is possible, and mostly it's there. It is there in case of coordination compound, complex compound. So here you won't get in simple compound. You won't get shifting of electrons. In uh, see, the thing is, once the hybrid orbital forms, right, then it is. You can consider this similar to similar as atomic orbital. Everything is completely same. The only thing is what the orbitals, the atomic orbitals, which have slightly different energy, they combines and forms an equal energy orbital. That is it. So that's why we have redistribution of energy. That depends upon the orbital, right? Which orbitals are there? That depends upon the plane and other thing. Yes, understood. No, we do not have shifting of electron cloud. Electron cloud will discuss when the bond forms and we'll have the electron cloud between carbon and hydrogen bond. And that electron cloud present in sp3 s overlap. That we can see. Shifting of electron cloud is possible in resonance when resonance is there. Yes, shares. Yeah. So this is the explanation of CH4 molecule. Like you see, if you try to find out, and hence the hybridization in CH4 is what? I remember one more thing. When I say that find out the hybridization of CH4 molecule, hybridization is only for the central atom. 
like we say like this hybridization of this molecule but we mean we uh, we this means what that we need to find out the hybridization of central atom right because it is the atomic orbitals of central atom which intermix and forms the hybrid orbital so we always consider the central atom for hybridization okay for the calculation of hybridization like you see if i ask you to find out the hybridization of becl2 molecule it does not mean the hybridization is for this molecule but it means the hybridization of beryllium in this molecule so in ch4 one last thing the hybrid orbital is sp3 and hence the hybridization is sp3 becl2 you see beryllium the electronic configuration is four electron so 1s2 and 2s2 right so this is a 2s orbital and this is 2p this is a ground state configuration since it has to combine with two chlorine so it must have two unpaired electron so in excited state one electron jumps into any one of the p orbital we do not know which p orbital is it whether it is psp or pz whatever it is this is the configuration we have now before bonding with chlorine these two orbitals go under hybridization and it forms two sp hybridized hybrid orbital which has one one electron each and these two orbitals the p orbitals are left unhybridized yes now this sp hybridized take part in the bonding and if i draw the orbital diagram it is one two one electron here one electron here hybrid orbital and for chlorine we have p orbital that is one electron for chlorine so this is the internuclear axis you see and this overlap is sigma overlap hybridization for beryllium is sp hybridized clear you see when it is sp hybridized the geometry is linear right understood guys any doubt in this co2 you try hybridization of co2 what is the hybridization here yes it is a covalent bond usually it should be ionic but for be and mg to some extent mg cl2 it partially covalent partially ionic be cl2 is more covalent less ionic
Did you draw the orbital diagram of CO2? Acha, you tell me, what is the structure of CO2? Is it O double bond C, double bond O? What is the hybridization of carbon atom in this? SP. We all know SP hybridized, right? But you see, we have two pi bonds here, right? I want to under, I want you to understand the orbital diagram here because that will, you know, uh, if you understand the orbital diagram, you'll understand the actual concept here. You know, it is SP hybridized, right? Okay, now you see. And we have two pi bonds here, and you also know that hybrid orbital never forms pi bond, right? Now you see. This two three information you have. Carbon has six electron, so one s two, two s two, two p two, two s and two p. Okay, this is the ground state configuration. In excited state, one electron jumps over here, and we get two s one. And two p. Okay. Now you see what happens here. Listen to me carefully. Since it has to make a bond with two oxygen atom, it means carbon must have two unpaired electron. Present in hybrid orbital. So what happens? This s and one of the p orbitals will take part in hybridization. It forms two sp hybridized hybrid orbital. Contains one one electron. This is sp hybridized, and two atomic p orbitals will be left unhybridized. And why it left unhybridized? Because I have given you one point in the beginning that if any pi bond to be formed, then equal number of atomic orbitals must be left unhybridized. Yes or no? Tell me. I want you to go through the characteristics of hybrid orbital. There, I have given you this point that if any pi bond to be formed, equal number of atomic orbitals must be left unhybridized. Why? Because the you know hybrid orbital won't form by default, right? So since we know this fact that CO two molecule has two pi bond, so I just left two atomic orbitals which contains one electron each unhybridized, and which we use to help, which we use to form a pi bond here. Now this orbital diagram I am going to draw here. This one is very, uh, very. You no, know, it will explain all the concept here. You see, two hybrid orbital we have. So suppose this one is the hybrid orbital here, one and two. Hybrid orbital. Okay, and we have two atomic orbital also. So the atomic orbital is. I am drawing this with a black ink. Dumbbell shape atomic orbital. We have one more atomic orbital like this. All these orbital contains one one electron. So one electron here, one electron here, one electron here, and one electron here. This is carbon, right? The orbitals are sp hybridized. So answer is sp only that we understood. Fine, it's done. We are trying to understand the bonding here. CO2, right? So oxygen also has. If you look at the electronic configuration for oxygen, it is one s two, two s two, two p four. Right. So two s two is this, two p four. In this, you see 
the 2p orbitals has one one electron h and one is spare electrons so i'm drawing this p orbital here which contains unpaired electron this is the p orbital which contains unpaired electron and one p orbital is this which contains unpaired electron the other two for this p orbital has a pair of electron this has one unpaired electron this has one unpaired electron same thing we have this side also one unpaired electron for this p unpaired electron here and a pair of electron here right do you see along this line if you can understand this this is the axial overlapping yes or no is this diagram clear orbital diagram axial overlapping now between this carbon and this oxygen two atomic orbitals have unpaired electron so these two combines and forms the pi bond here and here also you see the two atomic orbitals which has unpaired electron this one combines with this and forms a pi electron here now you see the pi electron is formed by the atomic orbitals not by the hybrid orbitals tell me is it clear any doubt no it is other way nisha the hybridization is sp that's why it is d and how the hybridization is sp because we have this explanation it's not like the molecule is linear hence it is sp but it is other way it is sp hence it is linear Yes, yes, yes. We can do that. Wait a second, Nisha. Yes, we we have one more lone pair, and that is present in the s orbital. I did not draw it here. This one you can draw it here. See this. This is the s orbital. One unpaired. This is the s orbital. what how do you know that o atoms has unpaired electron in different p orbitals we can draw the we can draw like this no hence we can fill the electron in the orbital 2 4 5 6 and then 7 like 2 3 4 5 and 6 according to hence rule you distribute the electron you will get two unpaired electron in p orbital aditya So basically, if you know the structure, and we know the sigma bond and lone pair present on the central atom, 
right we can find out the hybridization of the molecule right like this we can draw the structure and we can find out the hybridization orbital right one more big example we'll do on this try for sulfate ion so4 2 minus try this one Done. Just give it a try in this. Yes, 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 yes. You have to because there is no other choice up there. You require four unpaired electron because SO4 we have. So for four unpaired electrons, you have to shift electron from S and P to the D subset. Okay, fine. You have tried. Now I'll do this. You see, all your doubts will get clear here. See, first of all, oxygen, sulfur will have similar kind of configuration. So for sulfur, if I write down the valence configuration here, valence configuration, it is 3s2, 3p4. So this one is 3s2. And three P four, and this three D orbital is vacant, right? Vacant. But since we have four oxygen atom, so we must have four valence electron here, right? And in order to get four valence electron, this will go here in excited 
excited state and this will go here in excited state. So what we get here? 3s will have only one. 3p will have one each and 3d will have two electrons. Two electrons. Now we need four orbitals. So this is 3s, this is 3p, and this is 3d. And sulfate ion, if you know the structure, it is S double bond O, double bond O, O minus, and O minus. All of you know this? Do we have any other option, Weber? In order to get four unpaired electrons, where are those two electrons you will shift? Tell me. Sir? Yeah. So, yeah, but we don't know where the uh, electrons will go in the 3D structure, right? It can be Why any of the five. Uh, 3D only. Uh, 3P, we have 3D only. It's so a like, but it can, goes to the higher level. Yeah. So it could, but it can go in any of the five, right? We don't know which of the five. Yeah. So I'm not saying you. It, is, it will go into D X Y D Y Z or where it is. Oh, okay, okay. It just go into D sub. Which orbital we do not know. Because the next higher orbital is 3D, not 4S. The 4S 3D we have. 4S 3D we have, but the transition takes place in the same shell. Third shell, Madam. Got it? Clear here? Now, in order to understand this hybridization here, you just have a little bit of information you have. That is sulfate ion has, yeah, HD3 is fine, yeah, that's correct. Sulfate ion has two pi bond, right? As double bond O, double bond O. It means two orbital must be left, what? Two atomic orbital must be left unhybridized, yes or no? Because atomic orbital can form pi bond, hybrid orbital won't form, right? That's why out of this six atomic orbitals, which contains one electron each, two will be left unhybridized. That is in the atomic orbital form, right? So what I'm telling you here, out of this six atomic orbital, this four will go into hybridization and forms sp3 hybridized hybrid orbital, which has one electron each. And this 3D electron, 3D orbital, will be left unhybridized with one electron each, like this. This is 4sp3 and this is 3d. Is it clear till here, all of you? I'm not drawing here the orbital diagram because this 3d, you know, the d subshell has, uh, you know, the structure of d orbitals is difficult to draw here. So I'm not drawing that. I'm just telling you here, that we will get the structure of sulfate ion is SO42 minus, I'll draw it properly, is S double bond O, double bond O, O minus and O minus, right? But this orbital which forms the sigma bond, the hybridization of sulfur here is sp3 hybridized, right? sp3 hybridized and that is the answer if hybridization is sp3 geometry is tetrahedral. But sometimes they ask this question that the spy bond forms by which orbital overlap. You see for sulfur we have d orbital and oxygen has p orbital. So what we say this bond forms by p pi d pi overlap. p pi d pi overlap. P stands for orbital of oxygen that involves in this overlapping is P. The orbital of sulfur that involves in this overlapping is D. And since this overlaps gives you a pi bond, 
that's why it is p pi d pi overlap p pi d pi overlap looks like this this is p sub shell and t sub shell this is again The P sub shell is this, and D is this. This overlap we have. See this? If you could imagine, along this line we have internuclear axis, and this is the P pi D pi overlap. Did you get it? what you did not understand well how many of you understood it please type in guys quickly no it is lateral you see axial is along that dotted line the lateral overlap p pi d pi is this uh, well it's nothing see the orbital of s that involves in this pi bond is you see it is it is d orbital involved right atomic orbital is d only but the orbital of p is oxygen is p orbital so here we have p d overlap which forms a pi bond that's why it is p pi d pi overlap pd overlap you can write no, no p p won't always form pi bond p can form sigma also p can form sigma also mother the first bond between p and p overlap is sigma only Yes, understood all of you. Fine. So, D to form a sigma bond with S. Uh. if sd overlap is there then it can form sigma bond but we do not have sd overlap but we do not have sd overlap so it won't form no okay okay so now whenever you need to find out the hybridization you have to do all these things to find out hybridization okay which is which is time taking you see it takes a lot of time to understand the behavior of the molecule and the structure of the given molecule what kind of bond is present but always what you can do with the lewis dot structure you can draw the structure like this you can count the number of sigma bond and pi bond and you can find out the uh, you know structure here but we'll do the calculation of hybridization which what is the hybridization of molecule by a trick and the trick we are going to use is steric number rule right actual the concept is that one only that we have done b cl2 co2 and so for two minus okay that is the actual concept but in the exam we can do by this rule it saves a lot of time and effort of you right So, what is steric number rule? Steric number is number of bond pair 
प्लस लोन पेयर ऑन सेंट्रल एटम बिकॉज वी ऑलवेज काउंटन फॉर सेंट्रल एटम और वी कैन ऑल्सो राइट इट एज नंबर ऑफ आउटर एटम नंबर ऑफ आउटर एटम यू नो इट इज नथिंग बट द नंबर ऑफ बॉन्ड पेयर नंबर ऑफ आउटर एटम प्लस द नंबर ऑफ अगेन लोन पेयर ऑन सेंट्रल एटम दिस स्टेरिक नंबर now based on the steric number we can write down the hybridization you see this table here steric number and hybridization with hybridization you already know what that what should be the geometry of the molecule so steric number can be 2 3 4 5 6 7 if it is 2 it is sp hybridized if it is 3 sp2 if it is 4 then sp3 if it is 5 then sp3d if it is 6 then sp3d2 if it is 7 then sp3 Excuse me, sir. Are you talking? No. Did you copy this? Ah, yes, sir. We copied. So, how do you find out a steric number? Could you tell me? I have discussed this already. B S E P R. You remember? How do you find out number of bond pair and lone pair? Right. Valence electron divided by eight. Remember that trick. Yes, correct. No, it's not lone pair plus bond pair. Right? It's, it's, it's Q plus R by two. Yeah, calculate valence electron divided by eight. Quotient gives you bond pair and remainder that is R. R by two gives you lone pair. Yes, Q plus R by two method. Okay, so Q plus R by two gives you the steric number, and then you can find out the hybridization and then geometry and other things. Right. so basically that steric number gives you the idea of the geometry of the molecule of the hybridization of the molecule plus the shape of the molecule geometry hybridization and shape you can find out from that steric number i'll give you some example now okay and and, and i want you to do all these po4 3 minus i3 minus NO3 minus CO3 two minus XeO3 F2 IO2 F2 minus and Cl F3.
kan? Oke. Okay. Oke. Okay. So the first one is e to the fourth e minus. Oke. Okay. What we'll do? We'll find out the valence electron. Tell me the valence electron here. E to the fourth e minus. How many valence electron we have? Be is 32, so I'm trusting you, right? I'm not calculating this. So number of bond pair is four. Number of lone pair is zero. Steric number is four. Hybridization is sp3. And with sp3 hybridization, you know geometry and shape both are tetrahedral because the lone pair is zero. I3 minus the number of valence electron here is. Twenty-two. So bond pair is two, lone pair is three, steric number is five, geometry is three, and shape is oh, sorry hybridization we need to write no. So it is sp three d hybridization. Geometry is t b p. What is the shape of the molecule? Shape tell me it's linear. Right, NO3 minus number of BE is 24. Bond pair three, lone pair zero. Steric number is three. Hybridization is sp2. Diagonal planar geometry and shape. CO3 two minus the bond the valence electron is 26 bond pair three lone pair is it 24 let me check six into three eighteen plus two twenty twenty plus four it's twenty four not twenty six it's twenty four Nishan. It's twenty-four, three and zero, so it is sp two trigonal plane. X e o three f two. Tell me, valence electron. V e is eight plus fourteen. No, it's forty, not thirty. It's forty. Yeah. Bond pair is five. Lone pair is zero. So it is sp three d hybridization. Trigonal bipyramid. I O two F two minus. Tell me. Valence electron is. Fourteen plus twelve, that is twenty-six. Twenty-six plus seven, thirty-three. Thirty-four. Fifty-five. 
because in if you want to find out the bond pair and lone pair of electron on the central atom you need to have the valence electrons okay go back and check where we are cpr anurag bond pair is 4 lone pair is 1 so it is 5 sp3d what is the last one tell me the hybridization the last one right trigonal bipyramidal sp3d and the shape is t shape is it yes so this is for the molecule inorganic molecule which is given you can find out like this the valence electron if you have a structure given like this like suppose we have ch3 c triple bond c single bond ch double bond ch single bond ch2 single bond ch double bond c find out the hybridization sir the c to the left of the cyclic compound should be ch no because there are two double bond single bond ch tell me ch double sir i was asking sir the the carbon which is to the left of the cyclic the ring so will be ch no so, this one yeah Yeah, we have one hydrogen here. That is understood. Uh, no, sir. For the previous one. Is, uh, yeah. So I'll do something. Here. Wait. So I'll add one ring here. Another ring here. And C double bond O. And H two. Yeah. no tell me the hybridization of each atom carbon atom you don't have to name this
Okay, done. Yeah. So the first one I'll write down here only. It is uh, SP3, SP, SP, SP2, SP2, SP3, SP2, SP2, SP3, SP2, SP2, SP3, SP3, SP3. This one is SP3, SP2, SP2, SP2 here. Carbon is SP2, nitrogen is SP3. This is SP3, this is also SP3, this is also SP3, this is SP3, even this one is also SP3, SP3 and SP3. Right, so if you know the structure, just you count the number of sigma bond and lone pair present on the atom, you will get the hybridization. Once you know the hybridization, you know the geometry of the molecule, you know the shape of the molecule, right? Based on the bond pair and lone pair. Okay. Done all of you. Now you see the another thing here is uh, name we don't do, we cannot, this is not at all required. Okay, it is so lengthy. Okay, so ignore that, yeah. Fine, so you see, if you look at the structure of the oxygen molecule, we have O double bond O, this two lone pair on each oxygen atom and all the electrons are paired. Right, all the electrons are paired. So this particular, you know, distribution of electron according to BBD valence bond theory suggests that suggests that the molecule is is diamagnetic. Right, when there is no unpaired electron, then the molecule is said to be diamagnetic. Whatever the electrons are present, all are paired, diamagnetic molecule, okay? Weakly repelled by the magnetic field, diamagnetic molecule. If the molecule contains any unpaired electron, then the molecule is said to be paramagnetic, okay? That is the definition of diamagnetic and paramagnetic molecule. So according to BBT, you see, the electrons which are present on oxygen atom, all electrons are paired and it is said to be diamagnetic molecule. But the actual behavior of oxygen molecule, it behaves as paramagnetic. This observation that is done based on BBT was found to be wrong because experimentally O2 is found to be to be paramagnetic. It is weakly attracted towards the magnetic field, right? It is paramagnetic. And hence it is, uh, you know, the bonding or the property of oxygen molecule is not defined by VBT, that is valence bond theory, okay. And hence we require a new theory to explain the magnetic property of molecule and that we call it as molecular orbital. molecular orbital theory. So in this also, 
the orbitals combines and forms molecular orbital right but the difference in hybrid and molecular orbital is that in molecular orbitals orbitals of different atom combines but in hybrid orbital orbitals of same atom combines you look at the all the examples that we have done so4 co2 b cl2 the orbitals that intermix is the orbital of central atom only one single atom but in molecular orbital the orbitals of different atoms combines and forms molecular orbital that is the basic difference between molecular and hybrid orbital so we'll see how this molecular orbital forms right what are the you know method we have by the atomic orbitals of the two different atom combines and forms molecular orbital and how this theory explains the magnetic property of oxygen molecule right okay so this theory will start after the break any doubt in this till here any doubt fine so what is mot we'll discuss after the break take a break now we'll resume the session at 645 Okay take a break guys